Hello, I'm Rob from Mantic, and I'm joined by Matt, also from Mantic,、uh, and we are going to show you in this series of videos how to play Firefight Second Edition. We're going to run through what the game is, kind of things like movement, shooting, assault, all the basics that you need to know in order to play the game. But first of all, Matt, what is Firefight Second Edition? Firefight、uh, Second Edition is a game set in our Warpath universe. So if you're if you're not familiar for that, that's our sci-fi、uh, setting for、um, a lot of our games like Star Saga, Dead Zone, which、uh, a new edition came out、uh, just before Christmas,、mm. um, and Warpath, which is a big big scale game.、Um, we have had a game of Firefight before. This is a, a whole new edition. It's a squad based、mm. game,、um, typically on a, a table four by four or six by four for bigger games. Um, probably takes ninety、um, minutes, maybe an hour for smaller games,、um, and you're going to be up against an opponent.、Um, in, we've got a variety of missions. It could just be a kill mission. It could be capture some intel. It could be capture some objectives,、um, and、uh, a number of factions from our Warpath universe, such as we've got here.、Uh, you've got the, the the cunning rats, or the I like the, the use of the word the cunning, cunning, not only they're duplicitous. Nice,、uh, well, either way. Yeah, I was being. Uh, polite, polite.、Yeah. Um, and so you've got the vermin over there, and、um, I'm going to be、uh, using the enforcers today, who are the kind of the human super soldiers. Yeah. So we've actually got seven factions at launch.、Yep. So we've got obviously the enforcers and the vermin that we've got here. We've got the Asterians. So they sort of like use a lot of mechs and a lot of robots, sort of androids, I guess. Similar to elves, so you'd say in a little bit, maybe kind of they, yeah, they're an ancient race that's been around in the galaxy for a long time.、Yeah. Uh, you've got the Forge Fathers, who are like the stoic sort of space dwarfs. They're kind of very heavily armored, obviously squat as they would be,、um, and they have like a lot of mining lasers, things like that. You've got the Marauders, so they're the Greenskins, kind of a collection of goblins, orcs, kind of、yeah. hulks, which are a bit like trolls. You've got the GCPS. They're the human troops, so they are kind of standard ones. They're deployed on the planets by corporations. So you imagine a galaxy where the corporations own entire planets or maybe entire solar systems, and that's what the GCPS are. They are sort of sent out to these planets to try and defend them from attackers or even the local population who may not like being taken over by a corporation. And then you've got the plague. So the plague is like a virus that infects people, turns them into blood. Thirsty beasts. I think that's all seven. Probably、yeah. have forgotten one. I think,、yeah. what, I think what's interesting with、uh, the Warpath universe is that、uh, you can look at the the human side of it as actually the bad guys. Yeah, because it is all about corporate greed、um, and taking over planets, maybe without asking. <laughs>、um, uh, so actually, there is a from that perspective, it's a, it's a little bit different. Yeah. So we've got a game kind of set up here. So. How many points? What's the kind of standard point size, and how many models is that roughly? I guess we've said、um, in in the book to give people some guidance that、uh, anywhere from about five hundred points for a small game up to around about twelve hundred, twelve fifty, you can fit on a four by four table. Yeah,、so、we've got eight hundred and fifty points here.、Um, if you've got big horde armies, you might want to give yourself a bit bit more space. Um, once you're looking at fifteen、uh, hundred points or more, you probably want a six by four. Okay.、Um, so yeah, we've we've gone for about eight hundred and fifty points each、uh, here at the moment.、Um, obviously, you've got more. You're a bit more of a horde army than than, than the enforcers are.、Um, so I've got less less squads, less models. Okay.、Uh, so I guess a good place to start before we get into the rules is we can have a look at a profile for one of the units,、yep. so you know what stats you're looking for. And Matt, should we look at one of your enforcer operatives because they're like your Core troop, I guess. In fact, before we start, what different troops are you? We've got obviously troops, and then what else can you have in your army? So we've we've broken down、uh, the different types of units into troops, specialists, command, and support. Okay.、Um, and the 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 type of unit、um, is used in your force list building. Yeah.、Um, so you can have、uh, you get one free command. Um, and after that, you、uh, you can buy troops,、um, and、um, any combinations of troops and specialists and command can unlock unlock other things like your support units, etc.、Um, so it's important to get the combination right and the balance right.、Um, but there are some restrictions on what you can do. You can't just take all tanks,、okay. oh. etc. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> out. I don't want to play. <laughs>、yeah. um, so yeah, so everything the, the way the game works, your models are grouped into squads. Yeah. 
Um, and squads will cost a certain number of points, um, and then they, you'll be able to buy options for them or extra models, uh, etc. So if we have a look at um, a unit profile, um, this gives you all the statistics for a, for a particular unit, um, and it also breaks down uh, what weapons they've got, what dice they roll, what they need to hit, uh, wound, etc., and the options that they get yeah. as well. Um, so the, the what we call the stat line on the profile, which you'll see at the top, uh, will look probably quite familiar, especially if you're a dead zone player. Um, first thing we look at is the uh, type. Yep. So in this case, for my enforcer operatives, it's troops, which is what we've just talked about. Uh, the next one is SP. Now that stands for speed. Um, and on speed, if, uh, you've got uh, two numbers. Um, and in this case, my enforcer operatives have got six slash 12. Yeah. And that means when they're making a normal advance move on the table, they can move up to the first number, yeah. six. So they can move up to six inches. If they want to move um, in a kind of a sprint or a charge, if they were going to assault, which we'll look at later, they can move the second number. Okay. So it's 12. And it's not necessarily always double. Right. It could be different because you might have a fast or slow or, or some other impediment um, or bonus for, for moving. So actually, so my crawlers, for example, they're 6.15. So that means yes. they're 6 for a normal one, but 15 when they're obviously charging in, they can go and a bit faster. they're really scurrying fast. Yes. Correct. Uh, next along the line is SH. Now that's shoot. So that value underneath, uh, in my, my case, I've got 4 plus. So that means when I'm rolling dice to shoot, I need 4 or better in order to score a hit yeah. for each for each dice. Similar to the next one along, which is AS, which is for assault. So when we're in uh, hand-to-hand -hand combat, um, my guys have got here have got 5 plus, so they need a 5 or better okay. to, to score a hit. Next one along, AR, armor. Now this is slightly different to it is in dead zone. So in here, this is the number you require if I'm being shot at, yeah. uh, you would require, for example, 6 plus to cause damage to me. Okay, so I'm rolling against that number. Yes, right. that's a similar concept to Kings of War, the fa our fantasy game, which would be defense. Yeah, okay. HP is the number of hit points or health points that uh, each, uh, each model has. Right. So that's how much damage they can take. So my enforcer operatives have got one hit point each. So any so say I, two damage on my squad, I would lose two models. Okay. Uh, NE is nerve. Again, familiar concept if you're a Kings of, Kings of War player. Uh, that's the value there is what you need to pass a nerve test. Okay. Which might be if, uh, as a result of a psychic attack or a specific order. Mm. Or maybe um, if you've lost enough models, you might be broken and therefore you have to take a, a nerve test. So you start to panic, you basically. Really, you need yeah. to rally them around. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, HE is your height. Um, so that's used for determining line of sight and cover throughout the game, uh, depending on what terrain you're in and the height of other models. So is that a bit more abstract than, say, Dead Zone, where it is like literally the height of the model or things like that? Is it a bit more like Kings of War in is that it, sense? Yes, it's very much like the Kings of War height okay. system. Yeah, so if you're used to that. So it's a bit more abstract in that, that, uh, in that way. So you'll be drawing, uh, you'll be drawing uh, lines and fire lines, um, and then depending on um, how many models and height, you'll be in or out of cover or in or out of line okay. of sight. Base is is literally just that. It's so each each of the models in your unit, what base size they're on, yep. so you know exactly what uh, what size you should be using. Now US is unit strength. Again, exactly the same as Kings of War. So you can see a theme here. We've we've taken lots of concepts from other games that should be familiar to, to Mantic players. So US unit strength. That's used in usually in determining uh, control of objectives and things okay. like that. So if you've got a higher unit strength than your opponent. On a contested objective, you'll win it. So it's not just based on the number of models, it is based on... On unit strength, yeah, okay. yes. Uh, and then lastly on the line, you've got uh, your points value. So that's how much it costs you to add that unit to your your army. Yeah, okay. So below your, your stat line, if the unit has got any keywords, uh, they'll be listed there. So for example, my guys have got advanced training, anti-grav, and controlled fire. Yeah. Um, so those will have a special um, effect in the game. I'll be able to uh, maybe in exceptions to rules or give them bonuses for doing certain okay. things. And then under that, uh, we list the uh, the various weapons. Now, if I look at my enforcers, I, I can see that I've got one leader. Um, it lists out the lists out their weapons, and then four normal enforcers listing their weapons as well. And it's usually split into your ranged weapons and then your assault weapons. Okay. So you, um, you've got that. And then afterwards, I've got a number of options I can take for my uh, for my operatives. So I can take up to three additional ones, and it gives me the points values. And then I've got um, a number of the, a number of options either on the leader or for heavy weapons or for upgrading to a medic. Yeah. Etc. Okay. Um, and some of those options often have restrictions on you. Maybe only, only take one 
heavy weapon, for example, yep. or up to one medic. Um, sometimes it costs points values for that. Sometimes that's free. Okay. So how many? Do, how, obviously, you got another stat there. It tells you the number of dice you're rolling. Is it for and the range for the weapons? Does it tell you that? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, for example, my Genling forty-five laser rifle has R eighteen, and that means it can shoot up to eighteen inches. Okay. Um, and it also has dice two D. That means I'm rolling two dice. Now, in this game, we're using D eight, so eight sided dice. Yeah. Um, so, if my guy was uh, shooting with his uh, two dice. Um, I'd, also, I'd roll those two dice and I'd look up that SH, that shoot value, yeah. and it says I need four or more to hit okay. with those two dice. So if you've got a unit of, say, five enforcer operatives, each of those has got the laser rifle, that's two dice each, you're rolling... I mean, ten dice. Ten dice. Yes, okay. correct. And like I say, it's D8s, so Dead Zone players will be familiar with that. Yeah. Uh, if you come in from Firefight First Edition, that's quite a big change, but it does give us more granularity to make them all a bit different and kind of give them... Yeah, it gives you a, stats. a wider range in the stats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and assault weaponry is, is is similar. And if any of those, um, if any of those themselves have keywords, uh, those will be uh, replied there. So it might be that you've got um, uh, specific keywords on your assault weaponry, which makes it you know cuts through armor or something okay. like that, or gives you some rerolls. Right. Cool. So I think we've covered the basics there of what the game is. So in our next video, we'll have a look at. Well, we'll start moving around and getting stuck in, I guess. Yep. So yeah, in the next video, join us for movement.